Hi, I'm Eric. In this educational lesson, we are going to learn about partial product multiplication using an area model and a place value model. Let's begin. Welcome to E.J. Fullerton, where class is always in session. Before we dive in, I want to give a big shout out to Miss Jen and her grade 5 class at Lord Aylmer School. Thanks for getting in touch with me and suggesting this video. If you have a math or science concept that you would like explained, leave me a message in the comments below. If I make a video based on your suggestion, I will give you a shout out in the video and description. Let's you and I start with a two digit by one digit multiplication question. Let's try 17 multiplied by six. As I work through this and other examples, I will refer to some important math skills that will help you multiply using area and place value models. The first is place value. As a first step, it is important that you write the question with one number above the other. With two digit by one digit multiplication, you want to write the larger number on top, so 17 on top, multiplied by the smaller number or the single digit number on the bottom. Make sure you use your graph paper and line up the ones in the place value and the tens in the place value. To help you visualize this, I'm going to create a rectangular area model with one side of 17 units. So I'm going to first just draw this out. And notice I'm just drawing this freehand. I don't need to use a ruler or anything for this because it's just a sketch that's just going to help me visualize what's happening when we're multiplying 17 by 6. So there's a quick sketch. Again, it's not to scale or anything like that. Just a quick rectangle that's going to help us visualize. So this side length is 17 and it goes all the way across. So I'm just going to mark it with an arrow just so we can remember that this is the full side length at 17. And on this side, this full side length is 6. So just note too that the 17 is larger and longer than the 6 side length. If you're familiar with the area of a rectangle, that knowledge may help you with this visualization. But if not, don't worry, you can still use this model to help you. Using our knowledge of the number 17, we can simplify it to help us make more sense of our question. We know that 17 is the same or equivalent to 10 plus 7. And I'm going to draw a line down through our rectangle here that divides our rectangle into two smaller rectangles. So this side length here from here over to here is now 10 units and this side length over here to there is seven units in length. So what we can do to calculate the area of this full rectangle, we can first calculate the area of the smaller, more manageable parts, then add them together to find the area of the full rectangle. This will also give us the answer to our multiplication question. Let's start with our first rectangle here. We have six as a side length here, so we're gonna multiply six by our other side length here, which is 10. And we know that 6 multiplied by 10 is equal to 60. Moving on to our other smaller rectangle, we have 7 as a side length multiplied by 6. So 6 multiplied by 7, and that is equal to 42. All we need to do now is add our areas of these two smaller rectangles together, and that'll give us the area of the larger rectangle. So we have 60 plus 42, and that's equal to 0 plus 2 is 2, and 6 plus 4 is 10. So we have an area of the larger rectangle of 102, which also means that our solution to 17 multiplied by 6 is 102. Another way we can solve this is using partial product multiplication, also known as a place value model. As we just saw in the area model, we can think of 17 as 10 plus 7. And we have 6 here. We don't need to simplify that. We'll just write it over here. What this does by writing these out in the parts is it will help us when we go to multiply all of the parts of 17 with all of the parts of 6. When we multiply using partial products, we always start with this number down here in the bottom right. So I just circled it just so we remember that this is our starting place. So we'll start by multiplying 6 by 7. 
I'm just going to write that off to the side here just to keep track of what we've done. So 6 multiplied by 7 is equal to 42. Now I can multiply 6 not by 1 and not by 17. I'm multiplying 6 by 10. So again, this is why it helps to write these out on the side here just to identify what our parts are that we need to multiply. So 6 multiplied by 10 is equal to 60. Now, as we did before, we can add these together. So 2 plus 0 is 2, and 4 plus 6 is 10. So as we can see from both our area model and our partial product, that we have a solution of 102 for both. So really what you're doing with the partial products is instead of drawing out this diagram and creating the two smaller rectangles, you are essentially creating these two smaller rectangles, one with an area of 42, one with an area of 60, and as you did here, you are adding them together to find that final solution. Let's work together on another example, this time a two-digit number multiplied by another two-digit number. We will try 14 multiplied by 28. Now let's have some fun and make this video interactive. Pause the video and try the question on your own. When finished, submit your answer for question 2 on the card above, then continue watching. I'll start again with an area model so you can visualize what is happening when we multiply 14 and 28. So I'm going to draw this line here and we'll call that 28. This will be our line representing 14. And notice I'm just drawing this freehand, this rectangle. You can do the same. I'm not doing using a ruler or anything. And notice it's not to scale. As long as it's a rectangle, that's going to represent your thinking. So say this side is 28, and it goes from here to here. So it's the full side length of this side. And 14 on here goes from that there to there goes from the top to the bottom and as we did earlier we can think of 28 as 20 plus 8 and I'm going to draw a line that goes down through our rectangle like this to divide our rectangle into two smaller rectangles one that has a side length going from here all the way across to here that side length is 28 and this side length of this smaller rectangle here is now 8. We'll do the same this time for 14. 14 is the same as 10 plus 4. And we'll draw a line going across here, dividing or splitting our rectangle again into two more. So now we have four smaller rectangles. This side length is now 10, going from here to here and this side length is 4 going from here to here. So anytime you do a two digit by two digit multiplication you're going to have an area model that looks similar to this with four smaller rectangles. What we need to do now is as we did before we need to find the area of these four smaller rectangles so that we can add them together and find our final solution. So this rectangle here we have a side length of 10 multiplied by a side length of 20. So 10 multiplied by 20. So 10 multiplied by 20 equals 200. I'll write that in a different color just so it jumps out a bit. This rectangle here, this smaller one, has a side length of 10 and a side length of 8. So we're going to multiply 10 by 8. And that is going to equal 80. Our small long rectangle down here is has a side length of 4 multiplied by the side length of 20 and 4 times 20 is also equal to 80. And finally our last rectangle has a side length of 4 and a side length of 8 so 4 multiplied by 8 and that is equal to 32. Now all we need to do, as we did in our first example, is add these numbers together. So we will do 200 plus 80 plus 80 plus 32. And this time um, I am making use of our graph paper and lining up all our ones, tens, and hundreds. So now when we add 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 2 is 2, 0 plus 8 is 8, 
Another 8 makes 16, and 3 makes 19. Carry the 1, and 2 plus 1 is 3. So the area of our large rectangle here, our whole rectangle, is 392, which also means that our multiplication, 14 multiplied by 28, is equal to 392. We will do the same thing now using partial products or the place value model. Notice that I've drawn this line here just to separate our page so we don't mix up our numbers between our area model that we did before and the partial products that we're going to work through now. As we know before we start, what we need to do is rewrite this question so that 28 and 14 are written one above the other. So we'll write 28 multiplied by 14. And when we're writing this, making sure that our 1s line up for a place value and our 10s line up in our place value. Now, we could write this in a slightly different way. We could write this as 14 multiplied by 28. And in the end, we would get the same solution. 14 multiplied by 28 is the same as 28 multiplied by 14. However, for convention, we always write the larger number on top and the smaller number on the bottom. So we'll work through it this way with 28 and 14. Now, as we did before, we can think of 28 in a different way. We can think of it as 20 plus 8, and we can think of 14 as 10 plus 4. So what we need to do is multiply every part of 28 with every part of 14. We'll just write out the parts just to make sure that we are not leaving anything behind and we're in fact multiplying all our parts together and it helps us identify what those parts are. As we did in the first example, we're going to start with our number down here in the bottom right corner. So our 4 is the starting place, just circling it just so we remember where we're starting. 4 multiplied by 8, 4 multiplied by 8, and that is 32. Again, making really good use of our graph paper, making sure our 1s columns and our 10s columns line up, and that's going to help us later when we add all these together. Next, we'll do 4 multiplied not by 2, not by 28, but 4 multiplied by 20. 4 multiplied by 20 is equal to, change color, is equal to 80. Next, we'll move over to our 10s, so we have 10 multiplied by 8, again identified over here, 10 multiplied by 8, and that again is 80. And finally, our last two parts that haven't been multiplied together, 10 multiplied by 20. 10 multiplied by 20, and that is equal to 200. Our final step now, slightly different order, but we'll add it together as we did before. 2 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 2. 3 plus 8 is 11. Plus 8 is 19. Carry the 1. And 2 plus 1 is 3. So again, we've done it two different ways using two different models, but we end up with the same solution, 392. So how is that? How did your answer compare with the answer we worked through here? Leave a comment below, right down there, and let me know. Before I complete this lesson, what I want you to notice here is a progression of skills. You've gone from using the area model to multiply, to using partial products, also known as the place value model. What this leads us to what this will eventually lead you to, we'll do a big arrow here, in your next step is using the standard algorithm. Whoops, missed an I in there. Algorithm for multiplication. But that's for another lesson. Click on the card up here to watch my lesson about using the standard algorithm for multiplication. I hope you learned something about partial products and the area and place value models with me today. If you haven't already done so, please like this lesson and subscribe to my channel. That way you won't miss out on any great new learning content. Remember to share this video with your friends. Visit my website ejfullerton.com 
to download the free slides and notes for this lesson. Teachers, parents, and educators, visit my Teachers Pay Teachers store to purchase full lesson plans, activities, and more step-by-step -step examples that go along with this video lesson. Details and a link are in the description below. I'm Eric. Until next time, take care and keep learning.